Tommy DeVito was supposed to be a fun story. A local kid getting to play for his hometown team in the middle of a lost season. It wasn't supposed to amount to anything. Then all of a sudden he won a game. Then two in a row. Then on Monday Night Football against a potential playoff team in the Packers, it was Tommy DeVito leading the Giants down the field on a two-minute drive to win it and cementing the Giants as firmly in the playoff hunts. The end zones here at MetLife Stadium say Jets, but you wouldn't know it from watching Monday night. The Jets offense continued to struggle against the Chargers, mustering just two field goals in a 27-6 loss that snapped their three-game winning streak. No team in WNBA history has ever come back from a 2-0 series deficit in the playoffs, let alone the finals. The Liberty aren't planning any parades yet, but most importantly, neither are the Aces after New York takes game three, 87 to 73, to keep their championship hopes alive. Ever since trading for Aaron Rodgers, the Jets have been dreaming of deep playoff runs, of Super Bowls, of parades down Broadway. That dream quickly turned into a nightmare Monday night as Rodgers went down with an injury just four plays into his Jets debut. He didn't even complete a pass. After the game, all the focus on number eight. It wasn't the driving rain that had Giants fans headed for the exit early. It was the miserable play they saw on the field. Against one of their hated rivals and with a national audience watching, the Giants were embarrassed in all three phases of the game, getting shut out 40 to nothing to the Cowboys. Exactly eight weeks to the day Aaron Rodgers tore his Achilles on this very field. Rodgers was out here in pregame taking dropbacks and firing passes. There are still rumors that he may be able to return this season, but in order for it to be worth it, the Jets have to be in playoff contention. And in order for that to happen, the Jets offense must somehow find a way to be productive with Zach Wilson at quarterback. That hasn't happened yet this season, and it especially didn't happen Monday night as the Jets were held to just six points in a disappointing primetime loss to the Chargers. A locker room is a sacred place for any football team, pro, college, even down to the high school level. But it's not just for the players, it's also for everyone about that team. The coaches, the trainers, even the equipment managers. Today, Eduardo Racinos, a student at Putnam Valley High School, receiving the surprise of a lifetime, getting awarded the 2023 Heart of the Giant Award, and a whole lot more. Eduardo Racinos is used to cheering on his teammates at Putnam Valley High School, but Wednesday, the roles were reversed, with the Tigers giving a rousing ovation for their team manager, the first ever non-player to win the award. It's, it's just shocking to me and excited. I'm about to tear up. Eduardo was born with spastic cerebral palsy, but has never let that hold him back. While unable to play football himself, the high school junior still found a way to be a part of the team, attending every practice and every game, providing support every step of the way. The team means a lot to me and they they expired my positive messages. Eduardo learned a lot about being a community member through participation in the program, and I think the program learned a lot about being family with, with Eduardo. He was near tears while getting surprised with the award, but that wasn't the only surprise in store. We'd also like to give you tickets to the Super Bowl this year in Las Vegas. <laughs> Eduardo and his family will be going to Super Bowl 58 February in Las Vegas, courtesy of Daniel Jones and the Giants. He's overcome a lot of obstacles uh, in his life since he was born and to, uh, to go from where he was there to you know, now he's walking on his own and he's a part of a team, he's there every day, he's helping, uh, you know, helping out, bringing uh, a lot of energy, positivity, enthusiasm that uh, you know, is truly infectious to the, to the group and that you know, certainly makes a difference. Eduardo's experience as an equipment manager for Putnam Valley, he hopes will also propel him into a career. He hopes to be the equipment manager for the Giants one day. Maybe Daniel Jones can put in a good word for him. From the Meadowlands, Alex Wilcox, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Tommy DeVito was supposed to be a fun story. A local kid getting to play for his hometown team in the middle of a lost season. It wasn't supposed to amount to anything. Then all of a sudden he won a game then two in a row. Then on Monday Night Football against a potential playoff team in the Packers, it was Tommy DeVito leading the Giants down the field on a two-minute drive to win it and cementing the Giants as firmly in the playoff hunts. Tommy DeVito, the fairy tale continues. The legend of Tommy DeVito only growing after leading the Giants to their third straight win. His stats weren't eye-popping, throwing for just 158 yards, but this game was as much about what he didn't do as what he did. He didn't turn the ball over, didn't take a sack, and threw just four incomplete passes the entire game. Just continuing to fight. I think in every game we played this year that we showed that we never gave up on any snap, no matter what the score was. Never looked up at the scoreboard, just kept on fighting each and every play, each and every game. And 
you know, it's gotten come to fruition in some of these games in the past now, and uh, we're just gonna keep trying to go one more each week. Defensively, the Giants continue to rise to the occasion. They've forced 12 turnovers over the last three games, the most in the NFL. Wink's just been the mastermind to our you know, success on defense uh, this whole season. Uh, right now, we're playing very confident. We're playing with a lot of anticipation, uh, a lot of situational awareness, and that's a testament to Wink and you know, just how, how he prepares us throughout the week. The G-Men are still just 5-8, and eight, but they find themselves just one game out of a wild card spot with four weeks to go. You acknowledge it, uh, understanding that you know, that's still here, but still got a lot to do, uh, so you can't get too focused on that. Um, I think Coach said the best, keep the main thing the main thing, and that's what we got to continue to do. I mean, we believe it. As long as we continue to believe, anything is possible, so that's what we're going to do. The Giants will go for their fourth straight win Sunday in New Orleans. There's now no talk of tanking. All the talk is on Tommy. From MetLife Stadium, Alex Wilcox, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. There was progress this week for Daniel Jones, just not quite enough of it. According to reports, he's likely out for tomorrow's game against the Commanders. Big Blue even elevated Tommy DeVito from the practice squad Saturday. As for DJ, he was able to practice this week, but still hasn't been cleared for contact. And with the state of the Giants offensive line, he'll have to deal with plenty of that whenever he does return. This will be the second straight game Jones will miss after hurting his neck in the loss to the Dolphins. If he can't go, Tyrod Taylor will make his second straight start for the G-Men. The Giants have lost four in a row, but they say one game can turn around an entire season. All it takes is one. One win to get the confidence. Coming out with a game that we felt like we should have, obviously we didn't do enough. Uh, you can use that as you know, the turning point and help catapult us to come into this week, going back on, uh, back in our stadium against our, with our fans, against a division opponent, and getting a divisional win uh, can be the start of something special. The Jets, meanwhile, apparently feel they've got too many cooks in the kitchen. They're on the bye this week, but the front office staying busy, reportedly trying to trade away running back Dalvin Cook. The team signed Cook just two months ago, but he's been used less and less each week, with Brees Hall taking a lion's share of the carries. Through six games, he's rushed for just 109 yards and hasn't scored a single touchdown. The trade deadline is October 31st. A big day today for Rutgers football. With a win, the Scarlet Knights would be bowl eligible. But in order to do that, they'd have to do something they haven't done all season, win a road game. Greg Schiano and Rutgers out in Bloomington taking on IU. Tied at seven in the second. Hoosiers punting and it's blocked. Eric Rogers scoops it up and takes it 17 yards to Paydirt. Knights take their first lead of the game 14-7. Third quarter now, Rutgers up 17-14, looking for more, and Gavin Wimsat delivers. Gets behind his big guys and plunges into the end zone. His second of the game, Rutgers up 10, and Wimsat wasn't done. Now in the fourth, he calls his own number and streaks right through the heart of the defense, 80 yards to the house. That's three rushing touchdowns on the day to go along with a school record 143 yards rushing. Rutgers wins 31-14. They're going bowling. It's going to take time. I told you when we got here, it was going to take time. Um, there's no quick fixes. Not at Rutgers. Right? It's hard. And you just work and work and work. And, but this is definitely a, uh, a step. To the ice, Rangers with a late one out west tonight against the Kraken. Right now, this one's scoreless in the first. Isles, meanwhile, looking to get back in the win column, facing the Sabres on the road, but a one-sided affair. After a scoreless first, Buffalo breaks through in the second. Late in the period, Jeff Skinner gets the puck in front and beats Samayan Varlamov, and the Sabres are on the board. It's one zip. And they weren't through. Final minute of the period, Skinner helps set this one up to Casey Middlestat, and then it's Mateus Samuelson who lights the lamp. Sabres go into the break with a 2-0 lead. They hang on for the 3-1 win. To the pitch, NYCFC hosting the Chicago Fire at City Field on decision day, needing a win and help to secure a playoff spot were scoreless until the 64th minute when it's Julian Fernandez, the upper corner. The boys in blue did their part. They win it 1-0, but they failed to clinch a playoff spot. They didn't get the help they needed. As for the Red Bulls, on the road at Nashville, scoreless until John Tolkien on the penalty kick. And just like that, he sends the Red Bulls to the postseason. To the corner he goes, New York wins 1-0. They'll host Charlotte on Wednesday. And finally, a funny moment from the NBA preseason. Spurs taking on the Warriors' number one overall pick, Victor Wembenyama, taking the jump against, guess who, Steph Curry. Curry, by the way, is six foot two. He looks tiny next to the seven foot four Wemby. Lofty expectations for the rookie. They're calling the best prospect since LeBron. The NBA season tips off Tuesday night. The Knicks and Nets both open their slate on Wednesday. That's a quick look at sports. I'm Alex Wilcox.